Hi guys, it's Just Modest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books on my physical TBR. Alright guys, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while. This video is going to encompass all of the books I own physically that I want to read and haven't gotten a chance to yet. I will also be doing a second video that features just books from my Kindle and my Kindle Unlimited. That video is going to focus more on fantasy, fantasy romance. There is a ton on my Kindle that I want to read before the end of the year, so we're going to see if that happens. But for this video, I really hit every genre and I will leave timestamps down in the description if you're looking for a certain genre. Now, obviously, I have not read these books, so I can't give you a very detailed summary on every book. I'm just going to say the name, the author, what I know about the book, why I want to read the book. So with all of that being said, if you are unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram. It is linked down in the description below. With all of that being said, let's get into my TBR. All right, guys, so I forgot to mention, I will not have any books on here that I talked about in my November TBR. I will leave that TBR video linked in the cards and in the description just because I already talked about them. So I feel like you guys don't need to hear me re-explain them. But anyway, the first genre we're going to start off with is YA fantasy. So the first book I have here is Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is by Stephanie Garber. I don't know very much about this. This is the same author that wrote the Car of All series. It's following a girl who I believe has a crush on someone who is about to be married and to stop the wedding from happening, she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts and it ends up being way more than she bargained for. So I talked about this in other videos. I very much enjoyed the Car of All. The first book in the Car of All series, I haven't finished the series yet. I really enjoyed the writing. I thought it was very lyrical. I thought the setting was very beautiful and very well described. So I have very high hopes for this book. I can't wait to read it. I actually think I lied because this is on my November TBR, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get around to it in November. But I'm very much looking forward to reading this book. Next up, we have a YA fantasy book that I honestly know nothing about except that it's getting amazing reviews, and that is The Firekeeper's Daughter. And this is by Angeline Boulay. So, like I said, I know very little about this. Uh, one of my friends read this book and very much enjoyed it, and she typically doesn't read YA fantasy, and she said it felt very adult, so I'm very intrigued. Um, I, like I said, just heard very good things, very excited to read it. I wish I knew more about it so I could give you guys a better description. That's why I sometimes hate making these videos, just because I feel really awkward talking about books that I've never read. But I think it's going to be fun, and I really hope to read it by the end of 2021. Next up is a series that I really want to try, or the first book in a series. I think it was Books with Brittany talked about it, um, one of the booktubers I really enjoy, and it is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. So I think this is a multi-perspective story, but one is set in the past, one is set in the future, and it's following maybe two queens. I've heard that the second book actually has a little spice in it, which made me even more intrigued, but I've had this book on my TBR for at least a year now, and I really need to make it a priority. Please let me know in the comments, have you read this? Did you enjoy it? Because I've heard nothing but good things, and I really need to check it out soon. Next up is another popular YA fantasy that I was so excited when I ordered it and it came and then I think I read like two chapters and I ended up putting it down and that is The Gilded Wolves and this is by Roshni Chasky and I heard this has some really cool like puzzles and it's I don't know if it's a heist. I think I ordered this when I was just finished Six of Crows and for some reason they were comparing the two but I've heard very good things about this. I'm very excited to read it. I wish I read it this year. Fortunately, I didn't get to it, so I'm hopefully going to read this at some point in 2022. I feel like my TBR is pretty long now for the end of the year, but I've heard such good things that I'm so intrigued by this book, especially like the whole puzzle element. So we will see. And the next book is a book I thought I was going to read all the way back in September, and I never got around to it, and that is A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I believe the second book in this duology just came out, so I now really, really want to read it. I am not exactly positive what this book is about. I believe there is a girl whose sister is kidnapped and then she needs to kill someone who is, I think, in league with the throne, but then someone else is also trying to kill them and then they end up either teaming up or going against each other. It's been a while since I read the synopsis, but this is another YA fantasy that was getting a lot of positive reviews when it first came out. And like I said, the second book is already out, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this in the future. 
And next up, we have The Bear and the Nightingale, and this is by Katherine Arden. So I started this a long time ago, I'm gonna say about a year and a half ago, and the writing style kind of threw me off. This is very, or it's described as being very much like a old school fairy tale, and the writing was just a little off-putting to me, but I really wanna give it another shot. I heard the series as a whole is absolutely amazing. Once again, if you know my reading taste and you've read this, please let me know down in the comments below if you think I should continue with it because I don't want to unhaul it yet because I think I will enjoy the series if I can just get through the first book. So we'll see. And this next book is another book that I can't believe I haven't picked up yet just because there's so much hype surrounding it. I believe the second book also either just came out or is about to come out and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. So this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling that is set in Shanghai and Everyone seems to love this book. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. It is very high on my priority list, but I think this is going to be a really good time. Like I said, I've heard nothing but good things, and I'm really looking forward to reading this in the future, along with the second book in the series. And this YA fantasy, I definitely want to read soon because it is being adapted into a Netflix show, so I definitely want to read it prior to the show coming out. And that is Beasts of Prey, and this is by Anya Gray. I actually talked about this in one of my TBRs. Obviously, I did not get to it. Um, it's following a girl that works for the zoo, and then she ends up accidentally setting the zoo on fire. And then her and a, I think it's like a warrior character, team up to try to hunt down this magical being. So it sounds really, really awesome and sounds like something I would really enjoy. So can't wait to pick this up and it should be a really fun time. And last up is a YA fantasy that I'm just kind of scared to read. If we're being honest, I'm just, I'm very nervous. And that is King of Scars by Lee Varduco. So, Shadow and Bone, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Six of Crows, I thought it was phenomenal. Absolutely loved it, one of my favorite duologies. I have heard such mixed things about King of Scars that I don't even know if I want to go down this road. So, I've had this for a decent amount of time, and I just see it on, it's a very vibrant gold, and I just stare at it on my TBR card. And I'm like, I really should pick this up because I want to know, I'm curious, but also, so, so nervous. So hopefully I will read this at some point in 2022. Let me know once again in the comments if you've read this, what you think. I'm just, I'm so nervous. <laughs> All right, moving into adult fantasy. Apparently I don't have as many adult fantasy books on my TBR as I thought. I do know I have some in pre-order that just haven't come in yet. But first up, we have Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. I've had this for a while. I read Into the Drowning Deep by Maya Grant, which turns out to be a pen name of Seanan McGuire. So I am even more curious to read this book only because Into the Drowning Deep is probably my favorite sci-fi novel of all time. So I think this is gonna be really fun. It's also really short. I believe it follows a group of children that are able to cross this doorway into like this whimsical world. And then once they leave the world, they're all sent to this sort of like orphanage where they're dealing with the fact that they were able to go to this magical world. I could be completely off base there. That's kind of what I gathered from the synopsis. And I believe this is a series. So I'm very excited to read this and I hope I enjoy it and continue with the series. Like I said, I really enjoy Sean and McGuire's writing. So I think this will be very enjoyable and I can't wait to read it. And another adult fantasy book that I want to get to is Semlin Sends, and this is by Josiah Bancroft. And I believe it was Elliot Brooks talked about this a lot on her channel, and she just made it seem like a really enjoyable read. It's following Semlin, who, after being married, goes on a honeymoon to the Tower of Babel and loses his wife and has to ascend this tower in order to save her. I've heard that the writing is not lyrical, but it's kind of hard to get into or hard to decipher, which was what was putting me off from reading this. However, a lot of people have said they really enjoy the series. Um, Pursue Project, Peru's Project. I always want to say Pursue. Peru's Project talked about this also um, in one of her vlogs and she just made it sound like such a fun read. So I will definitely be picking this up, hopefully at the end of 2021 and some point in December, if not definitely early 2022. All right, moving into fantasy romance. Let me just say, there are not a lot on this list and that is only because most of the fantasy romance I have and new adult romance I have are on my Kindle. Like I said, that will be a separate, very, very long video. So these are just the physical fantasy romance and new adult romance that I own. So first up, we have Savage and the Swan and this is by Ella Fields. I believe this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It was very popular on Book Talk, which is what made me want to pick it up. And I don't know very much about it. People said if you're a fan of Akatar, you'll really enjoy this. I believe it's this girl who's been raised to fear this beast type 
creature or the savage and her family has like feared him for a long time and then she ends up running away and ends up being like captured by him or something of that nature. But I'm super excited to read this and I can't wait to get to it. And next up is another TikTok book that was also on another one of my TBR videos. And that is The Atlas Six. This is gaining a lot of hype lately and this is by Olivia Blake. So this is, I believe, about a secret society and these people that are trying to compete in order to gain access to the secret society. And I've heard very interesting things about it. I think this will be very good. Honestly, I kind of just want to wait for the audio format of this book to come out, which is why I've been putting off reading it. Um, if it doesn't end up coming out soon, then I will just read it physically. But yeah, I'm very interested. Like I said, getting a lot of hype. And next up is a series that I actually think I own on my Kindle and in physical, and that is City of Thorns. I remember reading the back of this book and being like, I have to pick this up. It's following a girl that ends up teaming up with this demon and they're both trying to get revenge on these people. And it just sounded like a really fun time. And I honestly can't believe I still haven't picked it up. I think I wanted to pick this up back in October for spooky season, but I ended up reading so many other great books. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And I really, really want to get to it soon. Another one, please let me know down in the comments if you have read this. I can't find, there aren't a ton of reviews on this book, so I'm kind of interested on how it ends up being. I'm kind of worried about the writing in it, but we'll see. So I'm looking forward to reading this in the future. Next up is a book I haven't heard too much about and I'm very intrigued by, and that is Gods and Monsters. And this is by Janie, Janie Marie. So I think I said this in another video. I accidentally ordered this thinking I was ordering a Shelby Mahern book. And I just read the back and it's so interesting. So it's following this young mother who is fighting to save her family. And then I think she teams up with a fallen angel type being in order to save them. And then it has the whole chosen one trope, but I'm really interested. So this might get pushed onto my November TBR. Um, it's not too long and like the back artwork is, let me see my camera, is really cool. Just the artwork in general. So yeah, I think I might read this sooner th rather than later. So look forward to this in one of my upcoming wrap ups. And last up for fantasy romance is another book that I just totally forgot I owned and that is of Goblin and Gold. And this is by Emma Hamm. So the cover of this book is absolutely stunning. I believe it's this girl who ends up trying to outwit a goblin and then I think there's a romance that ensues and I have never read a goblin romance before. I've done fae, I've done elves, all of those things. So a goblin should be interesting and this is a very short book. So hopefully I'll be able to read through this pretty quickly. Another book that I haven't heard talked about an awful lot and also another book that I think I own the physical copy and I also own it on my Kindle. <laughs> All right, moving into romance. So I kind of lumped contemporary romance and historical romance together. And once again, I have way more contemporary romance on my Kindle that I'll talk about in another video. But first up, I have Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is by Talia Hibbert. This is part of a series. All of the books in this series I want to get to. Luckily, I used some self-control and I only bought the first book. I have not purchased the other two yet. But I believe this is following a girl who is described as a computer geek who ends up having a relationship with this handyman, tattooed, tough guy. And it just sounds really good. I've heard so many great things. I'm especially interested in the third book in this series. It just sounds like very cute, warm-hearted books. And I really enjoy these type of contemporary romances. So this is something I will hopefully pick up soon, especially with the holidays coming up. I think it'll be a perfect like Hallmark movie type book. All right, this next book I know absolutely nothing about. To be honest, I got it because Amazon was having a sale and that is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. So I have never read a single Colleen Hoover book. They have been described as like spicy trauma, which just sounds very interesting to me, I guess. Um, I've kind of avoided reading her books. However, a lot of her books are getting a lot of hype right now on Book Talk. November 9th, I've seen uh, Verity, I think is another one. And I'm just interested. I figured I would give her a try. Um, this isn't very high up on my TBR. This is more of when I'm in the mood for a contemporary romance, I might pick it up. We'll see. I want to read at least one book by this author before I judge her. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, so this will be on my TBR for a little bit. Let me know in the comments down below what Colleen Hoover book is your favorite and which one do you think I should start with? Because I'm a little nervous about reading her works. So please let me know down in the comments. <laughs> All right guys, so this next book is very popular because of the hit Netflix TV show. So this is The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is the second book in the Bridgerton series. I started this and then I ended up putting down. So originally I said I was not a fan of The Duke and I, and I stand by that. I think The Duke and I had some scenes that were done pretty okay or somewhat okay in the TV show that were done horribly in the book. 
Also, I didn't love the way the Duke of Hastings treated Daphne. I felt like it was very ownership and I just wasn't a fan of it. So a lot of people told me to read this and I actually started this and I was enjoying it, but I ended up putting it down. Now that the new TV show is coming out, I really wanna read this. Definitely gonna read it in December. Although I'm very sad that the actor who plays the Duke of Hastings isn't gonna be there anymore. He was so good. I love that actor so, so much, but it's okay. I'm still very excited. And since this comes out or I watch the show during Christmas time last year, I figured it would be a perfect time to finish this book. And next up, we have another historical romance. And I believe I actually got this because I had just watched Bridgerton and was in the mood for historical romance. And that is The Heiress Gets a Duke. This was a book of the month book and I've heard nothing but bad things about it since getting it as my book of the month book. So I don't know when I'm gonna be picking this up. Um, this is probably gonna be, or I'm gonna end up reading this probably very late in 2022. I don't wanna unhaul it yet just cause I wanna give it a try and I don't own a lot of historical romance. Once again, sorry, I'm asking a lot of you guys in this video, if you know a really good historical romance that isn't The Duke and I in Bridgerton, please let me know down in the comments below just because I do wanna get into historical romance. I feel like there are a lot that I would very much enjoy. I just don't know where to start with historical romance. But anyway, I will eventually hopefully be reading this. And last up, we have a winter romance, which once again, I completely forgot I owned. So I'm so happy I'm doing this video. And that is This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. So this is following two people that were born on the same day 30 years ago. Unfortunately, the girl was born right after the boy and the boy has just had the luckiest life in the world. And she has been very unlucky and she kind of blames the guy for this. And then I think eventually they form a relationship. Obviously it's a romance novel, but it sounds really fun. And I remember being so excited to read this last year and I didn't get to read it before Christmas time. And then it just kind of went off my radar. So I think I'm definitely gonna be reading this in my December or in December, I'm gonna add it to my December TBR. All right, and moving into sci-fi. So I actually only have two sci-fi on this list. However, I have been really in the mood to read sci-fi recently. And that is all because I recently saw this movie, Dune by Frank Herbert. So this movie absolutely blew my mind. My friends and I were able to rent out a theater. It was the first movie I've seen in theaters since everything shut down. And oh my word, it was so good. So I grew up watching Star Wars with my dad. So this just, I can't explain enough how much I love this movie. I actually saw the original, that was a little rough. But anyway, I started reading this book. I wanted to read it prior to seeing the movie and it was just very dry and I was having some trouble getting into it. I think now that I've seen the movie, I might have a lot easier time reading this and getting into this. And I really wanna continue with the series because I love the movie so much and I really wanna see what happens. So the story is following Paul, who is the son of this very prominent family and they end up going to Arrakis to kind of rule and then the old rulers show up and our disruption is a very simplistic way of explaining this book but it definitely has the tro chosen one trope with Paul and it's just so good the movie was so good so I'm very excited to read this um, I ended up ordering this just on a whim and I can't wait to see what happens in this story and this next sci-fi book I also got because of a TV show. So I am currently watching The Foundation on Apple TV. Highly recommend checking it out. Oh my goodness, I did not wanna watch the show. My husband convinced me to, and I'm obsessed. So that is also, I believe The Foundation is also based on a series. I will eventually hopefully get to that, but I was just in a whole space mood. So for the book of the month, I got Hail Mary by Andy Ware. A lot of people were talking about this, just saying it was absolutely brilliant, that it was so much fun. I don't know very much about it. I believe it is a, uh, this pilot or not pilot, this astronaut is in space and wakes up and has like no memories of what's going on. And he's trying to save, I guess, earth or something of that nature. But I really want to read this. It's very high on my priority list. I just have to be in the right mood to read sci-fi. Like I said, recently I've been in this mood. So maybe I will pick this up sooner rather than later, but yeah, it should be a really fun time. All right, so I only have one historical fiction on this list. I do really enjoy reading historical fiction and I do plan on reading a lot more in 2022. This book in particular has been very hyped, very talked about, and I just never got around to reading it. And that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. So this is a story of Achilles and Patroclus. And I feel like I've heard this story so many times and everyone just talks about how sad this book is. And I think also I purchased this book right after I purchased Circe and I hated Circe. I just thought it was so boring and I couldn't get into it. So I've been so nervous to jump into this, but 
we'll see. I do think I'm going to read it soon. Like I said, it is very beloved in the bookish community, but I'm just a little nervous. So we'll see. I will hopefully be picking this one up soon. And the next two are like contemporary fantasy. I might be completely making up a genre right now, but more like fantasy realism. And the first one is The Midnight Library, and this is by Matt Haig, one of my very good friends who is the only other person I know personally or in my friend group that reads books, read this and said it was absolutely amazing. And I saw it at one of my used bookstores and I grabbed it and I haven't picked it up since. I heard this is also very sad. I believe it's about a girl that is their self harm. And in order to cope with that, she is given a book that lets her see how life would have been differently or if she made different choices, how life could have been. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book, but I've also heard it's a really heavy book. So I'm also kind of nervous to pick this up. For some reason, this book also really reminds me of the winter time and seems like something that I want to read in winter. So I might read this in like January or February and when it's snowing and We'll see. That's my plans for this book, but I definitely will be picking this book up soon. All right, this next book, I can't believe I haven't read yet. I was so excited for this book to come out. I was gonna have it, I actually pre-ordered it. It was supposed to come the day it was released. I was gonna read it that week, and then it never showed up. It got lost in the mail, and Amazon said they could either issue me a refund or send me a new copy, but the new copy wouldn't come for almost two months, and I just couldn't wait that long. Well. About two weeks later, the new copy or the original copy did show up and that is Under the Whispering Door and this is by TJ Clune. However, I just had so many other books I was reading at the time, I didn't jump into this and I really wanna read this. However, it is not getting as good of reviews as I thought it was going to, so I'm a little nervous. But this is by the same author that wrote House in the Cerulean Sea, which is by far one of my favorite books. Oh my goodness, if you have not read House in the Cerulean Sea, please do. It is just this beautifully written, cozy, cookie book and it's great. So this, I believe, is following a man that ends up having a relationship with the uh, carrier of the dead, maybe? It's been a while since I read the synopsis, but it's by T.J. Klune. I really want to read it. I believe there might be a little controversy going on with this book. I have to look a little bit more into it. I remember seeing that and then being a little put off, but we will see. I really liked, like I said, House in the Cerulean Sea, so I do want to read this soon. And hopefully I'll be reading this by the end of 2021, if not early 2022. And last up, I only have one contemporary on this list, and that is Grown, and this is by Tiffany D. Jackson. So I just realized I read White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson, and I wasn't a huge fan. However, I did really enjoy the writing. I just didn't love the way that story ended, so I might still really enjoy this, because the writing was excellent, and I liked the way the story was told all until the end. But I believe this is about a woman who is an up-and-coming, um, songwriter and singer and she ends up in a relationship with someone who is very toxic and somewhat abusive and then she wakes up one morning with blood on her hands is what I got from the back of the book but I was super intrigued by this book I talked about this in my I don't think birthday book haul my book haul before that so I'm very excited to pick this up I have also been told that this is a bit of a heavy it's very emotional so I've been waiting I don't know why I think that the winter time is like when I want to read really heavy emotional books. Um, but yeah, so I will definitely be reading this one soon. All right, we're in the final stretch. So the next group is all thriller and horror books and there's a decent amount. So first up, we have The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I have read The Broken Girls by Simone St. James and it is one of my favorite thriller books. So I have very high hopes for this book. I meant to read this in October during spooky season and honestly, my TBR just got away from me in October. I read so many books that weren't on my TBR and I didn't read half the books I actually wanted to. So I will be reading this soon. I believe this is about a haunted, I think this is a dual perspective, dual timeline story following a woman who goes missing at a hotel and then her great niece or her niece who tries to figure out what happened. But I think this is gonna be really good and I really wanna read this and I just keep putting it off. I'm not gonna put it off again until spooky season. I'm gonna to try to read this at some point over the winter, but I'm very much looking forward to reading this. And next up we have The Haunting of Bryn Wilder and this is by Wendy Webb. I think I was supposed to read this about two Halloweens ago and I never got around to it. It has got very mixed reviews, but I've heard it is very slow paced and that is why I haven't really jumped into it. I also heard that the haunting part of the book isn't as prominent as following the character's journey. I think she's healing from something. She goes to some sort of lakeside retreat where she sees or she meets other people that are also like dealing with trauma or something. And then there's a haunted presence. 
I don't know. I was very interested in reading this book when I purchased it. Um, and now it's been a while. I've stepped back. I still am going to read this hopefully soon. Honestly, this might get put off until the next spooky season because I think this is a very good Halloween type book, but you never know. I might be in the mood for a horror at some other juncture. Hopefully Olivia Reed's Latte and Gabby Reed's do some sort of summer ween again and I will jump into this because I do think this is gonna be good. I just need the motivation to read it. <laughs> And next up is another book that I just need the motivation to read. So this is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. I had this on two different TBRs and I still haven't picked it up, mostly because I got this as a pre-release and then a lot of people just weren't crazy about this. However, the same people that weren't crazy about this compared it to The Maidens and I actually really enjoyed The Maidens. I forget the author, I'll leave it on the screen. But I think I might end up liking this. I believe this is Dark Academia about a professor that's also like a serial killer. Um, so we'll see. So hopefully I will read this at some point during the winter. Like I said, I just need to prioritize some of these books on my TBR and stop reading new releases, but I'm very happy to check this out. All right, and this next book is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I believe this is in a, or part of a series. I bought this at my half price bookstore and there was another book that had a very similar cover. So I'm thinking there's at least two books in the series, but this is following a girl who's trying to solve a double murder that I think took place in the past. And I've heard very, very good things. I think the reason I didn't pick this up when I was supposed to is because I went on Instagram and I did a poll if you guys wanted me to read A Good Girl's Guide to Mur Murder or Truly Devious and Truly Devious won by a landslide. And then I never got around to reading this. So I will definitely be picking this up soon. It sounds very interesting and I'm always in the mood for a good thriller. And last up, we have a book that I actually think I purchased during my book shopping vlog in Princeton. So I will leave that in the cards in the description. So it's been a while since I purchased this book and I still haven't read it. And that is the last thing he told me. And this is about a man who ends up dying, but he leaves a note to his wife that says protect her. So we're following the wife and she is trying to take care of her 16 year old stepdaughter who absolutely can't stand her. And I guess they're trying to solve the crime of like who killed the father. I'm not exactly sure. This was a Reese's book club pick and I feel like I've read other books in Reese's book club and have really, really enjoyed them. However, side tangent, I hate books that have stickers printed onto them it drives me insane. So just a side note. But anyway, I'm very excited to read this. I feel like I typically read thrillers over the summer, so I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to this then, but I will hopefully be reading this soon. All right, guys, those were all of the books on my physical TBR. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know down in the comments below. Give me any recommendations for historical fiction, sci-fi, any other books you think I should check out. Also, look forward to my upcoming video of all the books I want to read on my Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of fantasy and fantasy romance. So anyway, I said this already, but I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.